Alright, we'll get started here. Got a uh, full crowd here for Joomla. <laughs> I don't know why Joomla is uh, the ugly stepson or something. But um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and start this session. Um, and it is really all things Joomla. We want to keep it informal. We're basically going to walk through, uh, well, I'll see what we're going to walk through here. So uh, we want to cover things like implementation, installation, upgrades, configuration, a little brief review of extensions that are specific to Joomla, best practices. I think one of the good things to understand, though, going into this is that there's a lot less CMS, content management uh, system specific distinction than there once was. Uh, if, you, if you've been using Joomla for a while and have been in the city world for a while, dating back to Joomla 1.5, there was a pretty big gap between what Joomla could do with Civi than there is now. Really that largely had to do with the access control system that uh, Joomla now has. But um, there's less specific distinction than there once was, yet there is still some and we'll cover that today. Uh, I didn't introduce myself. I'm Brian Shaughnessy. This is Jeremy Prophet. We both work with Joomla and have worked with Civi for quite a while, so I'm looking forward to walking through this with you. All right, so let's dive in. Um, let's just talk about a few installation considerations. Uh, some of these are not necessarily specific to Joomla, but I think that there's some nuances that you need to understand. So the first thing is that um, if you're familiar with Civi CRM, there's a settings file, and this is true of all the CMSs that it uh, implements with. And that settings file will allow you to control where uh, your Civi CRM tables are stored. Now, when you install Civi CRM in Joomla by default, uh, it installs those tables directly in the same uh, Joomla database that you're using. However, you have the option of splitting that out and storing your tables elsewhere. You can put them in a separate database. And there's some pros and cons of doing that. Uh, on one hand, the pro is that it, it keeps Civi CRM uh, isolated from Joomla, that can be really helpful if you're running backups and you want to run maybe more frequent backups for Civi CRM than you need to do for the Joomla tables. It's, um, it's easier to then restore those backups. So that's really, I think, the big plus of separating them out. The biggest con is that when Joomla installs Civi CRM, it will always look to that same database. So if, you're, if you choose to, to split the tables and have Civi CRM elsewhere, then when you run your upgrades, you need to basically install, uh, install Civi CRM in Joomla, then um, fix or up, upload your, set, your altered settings file, and then run the upgrade script. Otherwise, it won't look to the correct database to run the upgrade. So you need to be aware of that. Um, I should just mention too, please feel free to stop and ask questions along the way. We'll have question time at the end, but it's informal so we can, can pause as we go. So those are some things to think about when you're installing. Uh, actually, there's one more thing with regard to installation we didn't mention. Um, if you're completely new to Civi CRM and Joomla, you do need to understand that uh, you can only really install Civi CRM by first uploading the package and unpacking it, and then using the install from directory option. Okay, in Joomla, when you go to the extension installation screen, you've got a couple different ways that you can install Civi. You have to use the install from directory. That's because Civi CRM is just large. It just is not going to upload, unpack, and install all in one process on most servers. So another thing to keep in, in consideration. So upgrade considerations. Um, there's two ways that you can uh, upgrade your Civi CRM installation. One is what we'll call an in-place upgrade. That means I'm already running it. Uh, I've got Civi uh, installed. I'm using it. And I simply go to that extension installer, and I go through that process of installing my upgrade on top of the existing one. That's really easy to do. Uh, Joomla handles that really well. After running that installation, it's going to, um, it's going to uh, give you that link to be able to upgrade your database right away. So it's a very smooth process. The downside of doing that is that it leaves any, uh, any files that we're no longer using in Civi in place. It doesn't do any kind of removal of the files. So if you have deprecated files, which we actually saw in 4.6, there's a, a library, a DOM PDF library, that has some uh, security concerns. It was removed from Civi CRM. And if you happen to do an in-place upgrade, you probably got a little warning message that said, hey, you know, you should probably remove this file because it has some security implications. So the downside of that in-place upgrade is that it leaves those files in place. I would say, by way of a recommendation, if you're just doing a, uh, a minor version upgrade, it's probably fine to do that but you might want to consider doing the alternate version for a, um, a full version upgrade. And that would be uninstalling and reinstalling. So that simply means I go to my extensions, uh, 
this page in, in Joomla, I go to Manage Extensions, and I actually uninstall Civi, and then I go ahead and install my upgrade. So, so if you uninstall, it will destroy your DP2. It will remove your Civi 7 DP if you uninstall. No, it won't. It keeps the database in place. Yeah, so un uninstalling from Joomla does not remove your database, which is why you can do that safely. And after you do the installation, you'll be aware of it, uh, so long as you're still using the, the tables are in the main Joomla database, and it will give you that upgrade link. Here's the one caveat of doing that, the second point here. When you uninstall the extension, Joomla, the, the menu items that you've created, the city resources, get a little lost. Joomla says, wait a second, this component doesn't exist anymore, and it, it breaks that menu link. Uh, when you reinstall Civi CRM, it doesn't re-recognize it. Now, the, it's very easy to fix. You can go into those menu items, you can edit them and resave them, and it will recognize it again, everything will be fixed. If you've got a site that has a lot of menu links, that's a pain, okay? So that's something you need to be aware of. There are other ways you could manually install or, or upgrade, um, and if you want to talk about that, we can certainly do that, but um, that's unfortunately a downside. Does this also happen when you uh, change servers, let's say? You your, your menu items should be preserved through, through changing servers. Yeah, that shouldn't be an issue because it's all internal to the, the database. The problem is that in Joomla, all those, the details regarding that menu item are stored in a single field with JSON encoded fields. It's all the whatever options you selected for a particular menu item. And somehow Joomla just kind of loses the connection. It's no longer aware of the component. It doesn't rebuild that connection when Civi is reinstalled. Right. Each extension actually gets its own. It's in a, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a whole table, the Joomla extensions, the underscore extensions table. And so each extension has its own unique ID. So if you were to uninstall and reinstall, it will get an entirely new unique ID. And because the menus store that ID, then that's the reason for the update. Uh, and got one more slide. We're, we're trading back and forth with our slides here, so we're going to make sure on the right one. Um, OK, so actually, you're going to cover the configuration files, I believe. Yes. Uh, yeah, Where's so. Yeah, prior to the prior to 4.6, um, there were actually three configuration files for Civi, unlike um, Drupal and WordPress. So there are actually three configuration files um, in Civi CRM. Uh, one is in the front end, so that's in the components com Civi CRM directory. Um, the second Civi CRM settings.php is in the same set of folders under the inside the administrator folder, and then the third is a the config.civicrm.php, which is inside administrator components, um, civicrm, crm. Um, all three of those files would need to be updated when you're moving or um, otherwise changing the database configuration um, because the base URL and or paths to on two files on the server may have changed. Uh, in 4.6, config.civicrm.php is gone. Uh, so now there is only one extra file that we should have to deal with. Two in total. Yeah. So there are several different ways you can deal with the configuration files, <clears throat> and some of these will actually help you uh, do a little bit less management of the files in general, especially when you're talking about moving from server to server. Um, one is to, uh, for the base URL that's in uh, the cbcrm.settings.php, you can use the JURI base um, Joomla core method, and that will actually give you the base URL um, that you're looking at at the time. So if you're in the front end, that's the standard, that's the default URL for your site. If you're in the back end, it's the default URL slash administrator. Um, so that will make sure that regardless of where it is, you'll have the right base URL. Um, you can also use the Joomla constants. Um, so JPath Administrator is the file path on your server to the administrator directory. And so you can actually use that one along with JPath root, which is the file path to the main directory of your Joomla installation. And I'll show you what. Wow, that's really small. I'm just curious why he's, he's pulling that up. Uh, who here is currently using Civi CRM with Joomla? Okay, great. So we have a lot of people currently using it. What we're talking about right now, you probably have never worried about, and you've never thought about, because you just installed Civi CRM and Joomla and it just worked. 
That's the good news. You don't have to think about these things. What we're talking about now is, is some alternate configurations that we think are some improvements. And there's certain circumstances, which we'll talk about in a minute, where they're, they're necessary, where they really uh, provide you more flexibility in how CBCRM is being installed. So just to alleviate any concerns that I need to start immediately getting into my settings file and, and make these alterations. This is kind of optional depending on your configuration. So I, I've always wondered why all of these are not merged in a single file, because if you look at the one that's in the administrator folder versus the other configuration file, they're almost the same. They're just yeah. There's only one slight like difference in them. Yeah. One. Yeah. The URL for the front end one is is for the, the base URL the site, and the one of the administrator is for the administrator path. And if and you're using this... With the JURI base, mm -hmm. they could be the same file, so mm -hmm. why isn't one hard link from the other, or just including the other? Yeah, it's, I think it's just, I think there's two reasons why. Well, one is that's just the way it was built initially. The second reason is that unlike the other two CMSs, Joomla has a very strict uh, distinction and separation between the front end and the back end. And so you see there's a common structure in the components directory that almost mimics administrator components because you have the back end equivalent of those components and the front end equivalent. So I don't know, Nicola, I, it's, it's something that's been around and one of these days, one of us is going to sit down and figure it out so we don't have to have it that way. Yeah, there were some, there, you just mentioned most of the, you just mentioned basically in, in the negative most of the reasons it's a good <laughs> idea to do what we just said. Um, the, the downsides of it are, of course, that right at least for the time being, um, Civi CRM you know is dynamically overriding those things whenever you're doing an update or an install. So that's something you would have to keep track of manually. Um, there are some sporadic issues in the cron as well because of where it instantiates the bootstrap, and we've done some work with that to try and improve it. But it's not. I think there are still some holes in it. Um, so that's so it it's sporadic. The JURI base can sporadically cause issues with it, um, but I think it's definitely worth it's definitely worth exploring. And the, once the, the deploy script would have to get edited as well, so that it does not it no longer dynamically writes in a hard coded path or URL. It just uses the there's already a condition for do something special for Joomla. So we should just be saying do Joomla native things for Joomla. This this is the second point that you're bringing up. So using if you're using Joomla. Uh, the, the jury path, uh, jury base rather, and then those two constants, then if you're picking up and you're moving your site to different environments, dev, production, staging, testing, whatever, uh, or you're moving into a completely different host uh, where maybe some of those file paths are different, then it will heal automatically, it just knows. So that's the big advantage, it makes it much more affordable. And so uh, moving and migrating the database, um, you know, this is also a part of the, you know, definitely a part of the headache of moving from one site to the other. Um, the biggest issue that uh, we almost always run into here is the triggers um, have a definer in them, which is defined to the user of the particular database user that was uh, being used when it was created. And if you are moving to a database server that does not have the exact same user in the system, then Civi CRM basically implodes and your Joomla site almost entirely stops working until you get that sorted out. Um, there's also a problem like Amazon, for example, mm -hmm. if you're using Amazon on yes, they don't know how to define that. Right. Mm -hmm. And you would have to have super privileges to get, to get around that under any circumstances. In fact, you have to have better than super privileges. You actually have to be root in order to install a SQL file that with a different definer. Um, so there are two ways you can generally deal with this issue. One is to edit the file in your favorite text editor after you've downloaded the SQL file in the way of, in your way of choice. Um, the problem is that takes an incredibly long time to do because the files, um, no matter how big your database actually is, the files are still, for text files, are still exceptionally large. Um, and so it takes, it can take on the upwards of five to ten minutes for the SQL file for your Civi installation and likely your Joomla installation with it, um, if you have the combined, to open. And then being able to do a find and replace on a file that large is yet again still more complicated. Um, a quicker solution is to, if you're comfortable enough to get on the command line, is to use Perl. So here you actually see a Perl regular expression um, straight, a string replacement with a regular expression in it that is going to delete the definer. Um, 
from the <clears throat> from the SQL file, that will cause MySQL to automatically regenerate the definer as whatever user it is logging in at as, at the time. Um, so that one liner from your from the command line on your local dev um, will take care of that in about two seconds. Um, similarly, if you weren't to use the uh, Joomla constants or the JURI base in your settings file, you can also use a similar um, regular expression one-liner in Perl uh, along with find on the command line to handle all of the Civi CRM settings files at one time. The other thing to remember when moving or migrating the database, um, migrating especially is a big deal, but um, is not to overwrite the Civi tables. Um, it does not drop them all automatically when you install over it, so there can definitely be some artifacts from that and you'll get some very unpredictable results. So definitely make sure to empty your entire database first and then regenerate from the SQL file. So I just wanted to talk briefly about compatibility. Really, it's, it's not so much an issue now in the Joomla world because uh, now you're working in the Joomla 3 uh, cycle and 2.5 is you're not really supposed to use it anymore and certainly 1.5 is long gone. Hopefully no one's using that. Uh, and so there was a point in time when we had to be very concerned about what version of Civi we were using with what version of Joomla. It's not so much the case right now. And thus far, the upgrades from Joomla 3, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 have been pretty smooth. We really haven't had too much issues when installing Civi in each of those. A few things with Cron have showed up over those versions, but other than that, it's been pretty stable. Um, however, as a general rule, uh, and this is true regardless of the CMS you're using, Civi CRM, you need to understand that Civi CRM is typically, typically going to lag behind the CMS versions. So for example, uh, you know, they're going to start work on Joomla 3.6 now, right? Yeah. So um, they'll work on that. There'll be an alpha beta release candidate cycle. And Civi really won't put any resources to find out if Civi is compatible or what needs to be changed to be compatible with 3.6 until 3.6 goes stable. Okay, and that's because there's limited resources and you kind of want that code base to come to maturity and be released before you find out, well, what do we need to do in order to create that compatibility? So as a, just a general rule, understand that Civi compatibility will pretty much always follow and lag a little bit behind whatever CMS you're using. Um, I just also wanted to mention one thing that is a kind of a, a notable uh, issue with the current release of Joomla, and that is, um, I'm sure if you're using it, you've seen in the back end that there are some UI oddities. Um, this is because Joomla is using Bootstrap, and there's some CSS and Civi that just doesn't play well with that default Bootstrap template in, in Joomla. Um, it doesn't affect functionality at all. It just means you see some things like your field will be flush right when you should be flush left or the label will be bunched up and, and things like that. Um, we are taking a look at ways that we can kind of reset some of that CSS and Civi CRM so that we create more standard interface, but something to be aware of in terms of compatibility. So we're jumping around a lot and uh, that's because we're just trying to cover anything that might be Joomla specific here. Um, in this slide, we just wanted to talk uh, briefly about override directory configuration. So if you're a developer and you've done anything in Civi to modify, uh, either workflows, functionality, or, or display, um, hopefully you're aware of the ways that you can use uh, override directories and, uh, and also things like hooks, which we'll talk about a little bit, little bit later. So the idea of an override directory in Civi CRM is that um, I have this core Civi CRM code and I have something I need to modify. I don't want to modify it in, code, in core. I don't I want to touch that core code base at all. I want to preserve that the way it is. That way I don't have to mess around with it when I upgrade. So I have the option of setting these override directories where I put a copy of the file and with my modifications and when Civi loads that file, whatever that class or function is, it looks to that override directory first and it loads my version of it rather than the core version. Um, if you want more explanation about that, we can provide that. But um, we just wanted to toss out there some recommendations as to where you should put this. Uh, we both, this is a, there's lots of room for opinion here. But um, we think that the best place to put it is in the media Civi CRM folder. That's where there's some other Civi CRM resources. Uh, in terms of how Joomla works, that's sort of a, a place where components are able to put some of their resources that potentially need to be modified and handled there. So we suggest putting it in media Civi CRM, custom PHP, TPL, EXT, something along those lines. 
And then um, one note about the extension directory. Uh, hopefully you're taking advantage of the extensions that are now available in Civi CRM. Um, you want to make sure if you are using extensions that your URL matches the directory location. Okay, so the URL is handled with administer system settings resource URLs, and there's a similar administer system settings directories, which is where those overrides are being stored. Uh, one more comment though while we're on this slide. With regard to the CSS, um, there is another option in the resource URL setting where you can set an additional CSS file that you want to load that will load after the Civi CRM CSS file. And that's the best place to make any modifications that you have, either in the Joomla template or in that custom file. So that's a great way to say, okay, I need to hijack Civi CRM in some ways and alter things. Um, just a note about why, about why the choice of the media directory, and there, it, there is kind of a specific reason. The directories underneath that, um, in, the fact that it's in media, Civi CRM, and then custom something or whatever, that's really kind of a, a user's choice sort of thing. The use of the media directory is very, is very specific because it's one of the directories that is not overwritten at all during a Joomla upgrade. Joomla does not in any way touch, that direct, touch the whole of that directory. It only updates things that are specific to Joomla core inside it. So you know if you put files in there that they will never be overwritten entirely. Good point. Uh, all right, so let's talk about a few code customization management best practices if you're uh, modifying anything in Joomla and in Civi CRM. Uh, so the first point here is uh, we want to encourage people to use Civi CRM extensions instead of Joomla plugins wherever possible. So you can implement hooks, and hooks in Civi CRM are kind of bookmarks in the code where you can inject things and you can modify things. Uh, we can explain that in more detail if you'd like. Uh, it's a great way to very cleanly modify your site. And you can implement them in both Joomla plugins and in Civi CRM extensions. But we're really trying to encourage people to use the Civi CRM extensions more because it creates code that is uh, it's not CMS specific. You could potentially pick that up. You can move it to a site that's running Drupal or WordPress very easily. Um, so it's just a good discipline to be, be using that system. Um, however, it's worth asking the question, are there times when it's more appropriate to put your customizations in a plugin, a Joomla plugin, versus a Civi CRM extension. I think that there's very few chances and times when that's valuable. The big one is if you potentially need to implement a Joomla trigger. So Joomla triggers, yeah, hooks versus event triggers. Um, in Joomla, it, it, the whole plugin system is based on this event trigger model, where something is happening in Joomla, and that event is going to trigger this action that I can now modify or imp impact in some way in my plugin, which is very similar to a hook. I think that the hook idea in Civi CRM is a little bit more flexible. There's times when you're doing things like modifying the UI, it's not really trigger based so much. So it's a little bit broader than the strict definition of an event trigger in Joomla. There are times when you want to uh, potentially modify Civi CRM and also modify something in Joomla. And so you want to use both Civi CRM hook and a Joomla event trigger at the same time or kind of within the same code customizations. And that's a use case where you potentially are going to want to put all your customizations in a plugin. It just makes it easier to, to manage the code. Um, when you're calling Civi CRM hooks from a Joomla plugin, it's super easy to do. You've got a class, every plugin has to have a class, and then you just call Civi CRM underscore whatever the hook name is. Um, in previous versions, you had to preface it with Joomla underscore, you don't have to do that anymore. It's just Civi CRM underscore build form, page run, whatever the hook is. And um, just a comment about hooks versus the override files. As much as the override files are a really important and valuable way for you to alter the functionality of your site with customizations, you don't want to do that unless you have no other options. The best way to, to handle things are with these hooks because you, your code is much more uh, simplified. It's it's very precise. I'm going to add a field to a form. I can do that in just a few lines. I don't need to take an existing file that's you know, a thousand lines long and alter something in the middle of it. I can implement it with a, a hook. So wherever possible, use hooks versus override PHP TPL files. Um, TPL files, if you're not aware, that's uh, CiviCRM's way of handling templating. It's a smarty template. 
Um, it's very different from how Joomla handles things, and it's probably a pain point for a lot of Joomla developers who are used to using the MVC model with views and things like that. But it is what CiviCRM uses, so you gotta kind of roll with the punches there. Um, in some of the newer versions of Civi, I think 4.4 is when the regions were introduced. Yeah. So in a lot of the template files, not all of them, but a lot of them, there are now regions that are defined, which are sort of placeholders in your template file, basically. And using hooks, you can implement some customizations to the template through that. So that's a very clean way to do things, and is the preferred way. However, if you can't do that, then you can use the template uh, files. And another option with the template overrides is to use what's called an extra.tpl file. What that is, is it's the file name, and instead of saying file name.tpl, which would override it, you use file name.extra.tpl. And instead of overriding that file, it simply appends whatever you have in that file to the end of it. So let's say that I wanted to hide a field, uh, a form. Okay, I don't, uh, I don't need it. It's something that my client doesn't use. It's a back-end form. We're trying to simplify the interface, make the staff's life easier. You could use that extra.tpl file and with jQuery say, okay, find this field and just hide it. Okay, very easy, very simple. And doing it in the extra it keeps it very clean. I'm not, again, overriding the entire file. Um, the alternative, especially for, especially for JavaScript, there may be some other things where um, the regions aren't quite specific enough yet um, to be able to uh, put, a specific, put a piece of code where you want it. But as far as JavaScript or CSS goes, um, using the regions for those specific things um, are generally, would generally be the preferred way to go. Um, since they will put JavaScript in the appropriate places in the files in a consistent way. Um, additionally, that would also, you'd also be using extensions to do that. Uh, and whether you did that via, whether you made a, whether you grouped your changes in multiple extensions so you could turn them on and off individually, or you could, uh, created a single custom extension that is say, all the customizations I want to do on my site to Civi, um, Either of those ways um, helps to kind of one, um, you know, get you accustomed to building in the extent building in the extension style and going through the process of doing that. Um, in addition to um, giving access to all of the hooks that are in, giving easier access to the other hooks, other things that the extensions can do at the same time, um, and it will actually when if you were to share any of these things then the uh, version markers would also be on those files so that they would be, there would be some control from the Civi Sierra extensions directory as to whether or not that could be used on a particular version of Civi. I should mention that that last tip there, that's not CMS specific. That's true if you're using Drupal and WordPress as well. In the ACL, um, so this first part is kind of a general Joomla public service announcement. Please do not use the ACL as is when it is first installed from Joomla ever. Don't use it at all. Delete the exist pretty much except for maybe super admin and admin and red and the um, registered. Delete the other delete the other user group types altogether and create ones that make sense for whatever your website is actually using. Um, also, the <clears throat> registered, uh, the public registered and special, please rename those to something that makes sense to you uh, and that will make sense if you have a client that will be using it, that will make sense to the client as well. Um, that will make it easier to make sure that your permissions are all assigned to the right thing, especially if you're going to add much more specific permissions going down the road and you're going to be adding groups. Um, now that Joomla 3 has that pretty well in hand, um, that's pretty easy to do. Um, once you've done that, you'll definitely want to, on, it, on each installation, go through um, Civi's default settings for permissions and make sure that none of the user group levels have permissions higher than they absolutely need. Um, and you'll obviously want to make, that will obviously also give you the option to assign permissions um, you know, where they are not currently assigned by default. Either way, you really don't want to depend on the default set of permissions. Um, to do what you want to do because generally they're going to, you're going to run into them not working the way you expect at the worst possible time. Um, the Civi group to Joomla user group sync extension, um, that by installing that, uh, installing that, that will give you some options to create a 
<clears throat> an ongoing sync between uh, Joomla's user groups and cities, and it will create city CRM groups to match. Um, yeah, I believe it doesn't right. create the group. You have to create you have the to group, create and then you sync it. Right. Sorry, Brian wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but by using that, that would that will give you an easy way to um, then assign. If you're actually also using city CRM level access permissions, that will give you an easy way to keep those in sync. Um, it would also give you a way to use hooks or other items to assign specific actions to people based on their user level in Joomla, um, and would let you um, also in your city CRM hooks make calls to Joomla to have people moved in their user level if something in Civi CRM happens. Yeah, so let's say that you had a Civi CRM group called Board of Directors, and then you create an ACL group in Joomla called Board of Directors, you can sync them. And maybe you manage that all in Civi CRM, you add people to the board, you remove people from the board. Whenever you do that in Civi, it will automatically take care of it in Joomla. So just make sure those two things sync together. You want to talk about Civi yeah, Authenticate? So Civi Authenticate is another plugin extension that we just want to mention with ACL. Uh, and we'll review some other extensions a little bit later on. Uh, so Civi Authenticate is an authentication plugin that can replace your Joomla authentication plugin. In Joomla, that plugin just says, well, when a person logs in, what method am I going to use to make sure that they're a valid user and that they can indeed log in? And Joomla supports multiple, multiple ones. You can log in with Google. You can log in with the native Joomla. Uh, I don't know, there's several other ones that ship with, with Joomla. But um, what that's intended to do is allow some connections with the membership in, in Civi. So when a person logs in, what it does is it says, let me go out and find out if that person's a member in good standing. And if they're a member in good standing, great, I, I log them in. If not, then I, I prevent them from logging in. And there's some great options there. Um, if they're not a member in good standing, and you, you want to block them from having access to the site, you can redirect them to a Civi CRM contribution page where they can renew their membership, and it fills it with a checksum value. So it automatically loads all their data into that form, and they can just proceed with their renewal. Um, the other thing is that you don't have to block access with that plugin. You can allow access, but simply change a person's ACL group. So let's say that you, um, you want people to log in, and if their membership status is grace period, you maybe remove them from the member ACL group when you give them the standard registered ACL group. You can do that with both the status and the membership type. So if you log people in and you want your corporate members to log in with a certain Joomla ACL group, you can assign that during the login process. Or if you want them to get, you know, you want your partners to have a different ACL group. So a lot of really great configuration options to tie in Joomla ACL with your Civi CRM data. Um, so the last thing on this list, um, create a special user um, that's, only, that's only privileges are for running the cron. Um, if you're not using the cron already, please do set it up. Um, it cleans up a lot of different things. Uh, Civi mail won't, basically won't work without it, uh, as far as any of the scheduled mailing. Um, and a num there are a number of other um, pieces of Civi functionality that absolutely depend on the cron. So it's definitely one of the things that should be on the list um, when you're initially installing Civi, uh, even though it's, uh, the documentation doesn't necessarily suggest it's that necessary. Okay, so some of the things that, I were, some of the things that we were talking about a little bit ago as far as um, providing access to Civi CRM content uh, in the front end or in other places in Joomla that it is not by default allowed. Um, one of the ways you can do this is by using uh, custom JFORM fields. So Civi actually ships with several custom JFORM fields and those are the fields that it uses to populate um, the events and profiles and contribution pages when you create menu items. And those are all in the Civi CRM directory, in Civi CRM directory Joomla under elements. Um, on the front end, um, but you can actually create custom mod you can actually create custom fields uh, for use in modules or in template configure for template configuration uh, or in custom components that will allow you to have access to other pieces of Civi data. Um, so, for example, you could have it pull uh, a list of groups or tags. Um, you could use the um, API fields method to return all the fields for a particular entity, like contact. Um, there are a number of different things that um, are made possible by that. And you could also 
have that pull values to allow booleans so you could check for mass mailings or other sorts of other sorts of options that are assigned to contacts. Um, there's a contact, the CiviCRM contact module, which we'll talk about in a minute, um, actually has the group tag and entity fields, um, those I was just talking about, um, already built, and there will be a link to download that module and have access to those. Um, additionally, you could also build custom Joomla, you can also build custom Joomla forms. Um, that would get around some of the issues like that you were talking about uh, as far as um, form layout or uh, the specific operation of a form um, that City Core doesn't necessarily allow. Um, and those are pretty straightforward to build. Um, and L the contact module is a fairly decent template as far as um, you know, just an initial building of a simple module. Um, and it would give you a good starting place for doing that. So there are several Joomla specific extensions. Uh, we were going to split this up, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we, we should just mention up front that um, the CiviCRM community, the, the CiviCRM Joomla community has not been really good about making some of these extensions well known to the community. <laughs> Um, in particular, we've been kind of lousy about making sure that they're in the Joomla extension directory. So if uh, you're seeing these for the first time, we apologize, um, especially since Jeremy and I are the ones that have created most of these. Uh, <laughs> there is, uh, actually the only one that we haven't created is in the extension directory <laughs> because he's much more uh, conscious about getting it in there. But um, we talked about City Authenticate plugin already and the City Group Sync component. I've got some links there and I am committed to getting them in the the Joomla extension directory soon so that we uh, we can provide them up there. The event listing module, both Jeremy and I have done some that uh, we've made available on GitHub as well. Um, they take a little bit different tact, but the basic idea is a module that will show a list of events that you have in your system and provide a whole bunch of different criteria by which you say, do I want current events, past events, do I want links to them, links to the event pa information page or the uh, registration page, do I want the date visible, all kinds of options like that. So if you want to check those out, you can do that. Yeah. The so the event listing again. The other the other of the two event listing modules. Um, the only part it doesn't currently have in it is it doesn't have a date range in it, um, but it does um, provide the uh, custom JFORM fields in the background, so you can very specifically control what fields it's actually returning from events or participants um, in the background. So you have a lot of control over what it displays as far as event data and the way the links are handled. Um, the CiviCRM contact module that I mentioned a minute ago, that currently does allow you to filter any list of con filter a list of contacts by one or more groups, uh, one or more tags, and then define um, the list of fields that you'd like returned by entity. Um, by default, it, will <clears throat> it pulls only the contact, uh, it pulls only contact fields, but you could actually adjust the template to have it uh, return additional fields as well. Um, the juxtapose component, this is a component that I've been working on that I have not made public yet. Um, this is actually a replacement for the front end, for Civi's front end. So this is, a custom, this is an entirely custom component that goes directly to the BAO and the API to provide different displays for front end data. So whether it be profile or contact display on the front end, um, some, there are, it does some custom JFORM um, display for writing into uh, Civi membership events and contacts, um, and also event display and registration. So there are, I should be, I will probably be posting uh, some of that as it's a little more generalized in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'll actually show you guys a sample of a site that is currently built with, that is currently using that. So this site is actually using the uh, using the juxtapose component along with all of the modules that we do, along with the event listing module and the um, contact listing module, and it is also using custom JFORM uh, custom JFORM forms to do some group subscription and notification. So hopefully it will load up shortly for us.
So this site is actually using Bootstrap <coughs> and a, a custom uh, layout grid called Singularity Grid that's built on SAS, so it's using the SAS version of Bootstrap um, and a custom grid to run it. Um, this is a conference registration site. It's right here. So this is an example of the uh, event listing module. So it gives you the option. It's listing upcoming events. Actually, there are some, since it doesn't have the date range, there are events that have already expired at this point. Um, and has the option to go to uh, registration for that. The notification and newsletter forms, those are custom J form forms that will that will submit directly into City CRM. <coughs> contact listing is displaying contact information um, in an accordion field and that's it just happened to be that we're choosing name uh, a custom field bio and uh, the user image and then registering for a program juxtapose is listing the available events along with choosing the uh, different pieces of event information that it's pulling out <coughs> And since these events are closed, you're not getting the, <clears throat> the registration form, which is the core city registration form here. Um, but otherwise, you get the standard registration form. And the site is fully responsive. So big Vegas since May 4th, uh, They closed. They're not taking registration. But <laughs> so I would. Does uh, the module filter by event type? It can. Cool. Yeah. Um, Make me happy. Actually, I'll see if I, there's actually one other one. On the uh, event. List. Uh -huh. um, I know there's a date filter. What if you took one of the past dates and made it inactive? Would it no longer show? Yes. If the if so the if the event was actually made inactive or was not public, then it would disappear. From you just go in. Right. This is a different local site that's using the same. That's also using juxtapose. I just wanted to pull up a, an actual working event form just to kind of prove that it could. But so there's the work. There's working event registration form. So the last uh, extension here that we wanted to just bring your attention to is one uh, that was developed by the, uh, the developer of Community Builder. So Joomla users, I'm sure, are familiar with that, CB. And uh, he, built it, he built it so that City would be able to talk to CB, Community Builder, a little bit. Um, but it's not, it doesn't actually require Community Builder. It will talk just with the Joomla user uh, table. So what it does is that uh, currently, right now, when you create a new user in Joomla, it doesn't automatically create a contact in CIVI CRM. It uh, doesn't create that contact until someone who is logged in interacts with the CIVI CRM form. It's that interaction with the form that triggers the creation of the contact. So what he wanted to do was automatically create a user account when, or used to be a, a contact record when a user account was created. Um, and that's kind of the main thrust of what it does. The advanced piece with CB is that you can, with CB you can have your own registration form and you can have additional fields there and so it will pull more of that data into CB. Uh, and there's some really nice features with it. Um, there's some options for handling how you're going to match records. So you always want to look to see if that contact already exists in the system. If it doesn't exist, you want to create the contact. And so it does some really nice things along those lines. Um, it will also store an activity record so that when when a contact is created as part of this user creation process, um, there's an activity stored. You know, hey, this came through this medium, this, this method. All right. We have till 3.30, right? Uh, yes. Uh, all right, let me I'll just cover these real quick. There's a few other things I just wanted to bring attention to. Um, I'm sure if you're using Joomla, you're at least aware of Akiba Backup and Admin Tools. It's probably two of the most widely used extensions in the Joomla universe. Um, Akiba is a great backup um, utility. I should mention too that there's an Akiba version for WordPress now, and it's really nice. You should check that out. Um, if, you know, if you're using it, we have a couple Joomla and WordPress users here. Um, however, a few configuration uh, adjustments I'd recommend. 
when you're using Akiba, there's an option to exclude certain database tables and exclude certain directories. So I always go in there and I exclude any of the cache tables in Civi. You, you don't need them. Uh, you want the structure. There's an option there to exclude the structure uh, or just the data. You just want to exclude the data. And so any of those cache tables can be excluded. And then in the directories, I always exclude the config and login template C. So template C is where your template files are cached. And it can grow very large. Also, your config and log that has a history of all the logs, they're stored over time. If you've had your site for years, that's probably a very large file uh, or series of files. So excluding those will just cut down on your Akiba backup and <coughs> exclude stuff you don't really need. And then in admin tools, one of the features it has is an HT access maker. And it improves the security of your site by adding a whole lot of HT access um, directives that kind of lock down the site. One of those is to prevent direct access to any PHP file in your site, except for the main index.php and administrator.php file. Joomla really runs only through those two files. Joomla pretty much never touches any, I mean, it touches everything else, but it does it through those two access points. Uh, and so HT access will shut down access to all of those PHP files. In Civi, that's a problem for two directories. The bin directory and the external directory, we have the full file path here. The bin directory is where your cron job uh, link, cron job file rather, is uh, found. And that's what you would hit if you've got your cron job running. And the extern is used for the IPN pingback from PayPal, authorized.net, any kind of payment processor that you're using. Um, if you have not excluded those uh, locations from your HT access maker in admin tools, then they won't run. Okay, you'll get errors, and your prime won't run, and you won't get anything back from your payment processor when you run contributions. So it's a great tool, highly recommend it, but just make sure that you've added those exclusions to it. Okay, we'll wrap it up. All your resources available someplace? So yeah, we'll make these slides available um, with the rest of the conference materials so that yeah. uh, all those, those links you can access. Sure. Okay. Thank you. All right, thanks. thanks.